This is the SS Rotterdam. It's a proud symbol of the economy of yesterday. And on this very ship, I will discuss the economy of tomorrow. I will talk to strategist Peter van der Welle and portfolio manager Jaap Hoek of Robico. And we will talk about their five-year outlook. Yeah, about a year ago, Robico was quite optimistic about the markets. Did anything unexpected happen in the last 12 months? Well, I think we were right to be optimistic. We saw a very strong economic growth globally, but also especially in the Eurozone. And what surprised us was the ECB. The ECB is running an extremely loose monetary policy, and we were basically aiming for a normalization, a first step to normalization. You had the ingredients there, strong economic growth and headline inflation picking up. But the ECB, well, they did not deliver, in our opinion. What about protectionism? This is something that popped up in the markets. Donald Trump, uh, of course. We, what we, about we talked about it, and actually we wrote about it. But uh, we gave it a very low probability. But it indeed popped up. And uh, what about the consequences for established markets, emerging markets? Uh, for established markets, we think it will not be enough to derail the economy, and it will have a big impact. So there we think you're still on the safe side. This is a five-year outlook. Five years is a long time. Still, you do make some predictions. Uh, let's start with bonds. Well, we talked about the surprise, and one of the surprises was the ECB. And of course, it has an impact on our bond forecast. We were quite negative on bonds, minus 2%. And now we upped that a little bit to minus 1.25. So still negative, but not that negative anymore. So, and then equities. Uh, equities, actually, we, we did not make any change. Still 4%. And maybe 4%. It's not extremely high, but it's not bad either. It's not bad, especially if you compare it versus cash, only 50 base points, and of course, uh, government bonds. So you're looking at a very decent risk premium. All in all, a positive outlook. But still, you need some appetite for risk. And the question is how to manage the risk. Yeah, you need appetite for risk. And we think also that the reward for risk is there because indeed our outlook is very positive. But at one point, the recession will probably come. Not early, but it will come. And what to do then? Volatility will go up in equities. So you need to look in another direction. So you have to be more defensive. You need to be more defensive. And the default option is look at bonds. But there we have a problem. The interest rates in the Eurozone are just not high enough. So bonds will not give you enough protection. So, so still go for equities then? Yeah, and if you look at the equities, because we believe indeed the premium is there and it's very difficult to time, look at more defensive strategies, like for example, a low vol strategy. A question about the markets. On one hand, we see high valuations. At the same time, Rubico is talking about a potential recession. It sounds a little bit like a contradiction. Can you explain that? Yes, indeed, Charles. The combination of high valuations and an upcoming recession somewhere in the next five years seems to be an ugly one. So investors uh, should indeed pay attention to downside risk. We also think that high valuations are to some extent justified because we do think that earnings growth remains healthy, at least in the next few years up to that recession. And discount rates, which are typically used to value those future cash flows, are still exceptionally low given where central bank real policy rates are today. So, so it's all about timing. When is this recession going to hit, right? Timing is essential, but also perniciously difficult. So investors need to uh, continue climbing the wall of worry that characterizes this bull market somewhat further and keep an eye on downside risk. Robico is talking about a 4% return on equities, which is okay, but not great. What can investors look for when they want a slightly higher return? One of the opportunities is emerging market equities, where we do expect 4.5%. 4.5% is still below historical average emerging market equity return. And that's about 8. Indeed. It's about 7.5% uh, historically. Uh, and the reason for that uh, below historical average return is that we do see the threat of protectionism. Protectionism could linger for longer. And that means that global trade could slow, and that will hamper technology spillovers from uh, Western countries to emerging markets. And that could impact the productivity growth catch-up of emerging markets vis-a-vis -vis the rest of the world, 
which eventually will translate into a less benign earnings growth profile for emerging markets in the five years ahead. Thank you.